My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. And since the start of this brutal Russian war in Ukraine, I try to update you on important things about my country. And I'm really proud to be Ukrainian because we have a lot of friends all over the world and our armed forces are really strong and they have already surprised the planet when they managed to stop Russian invasion and now we are cleaning our territories to return back to the borders of 1991. I want you to discover my beautiful country Ukraine together with me and I am honored to introduce you to Ukrainian Armed Forces. On the 6th of December 1991, the Parliament of Ukraine, Verkhovna Rada, passed a law on the Ukrainian Armed Forces. And since that year, the 6th of December is the day to celebrate Ukrainian Armed Forces. But we have another day when we congratulate the defenders of Ukraine, and that is the 14th of October. Why? Because not all the defenders were members or are members of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, and we have to remember that. It is very important to stress that Ukrainian military tradition is not limited to the period starting from 1991. Ukrainians and their ancestors were known as professional and strong warriors for a long period of history. Starting from ancient Scythians and Sarmats, I'm sure you've heard about them, and up to the period of Kyiv Rus, which shaped the standards of military etiquette and codex in Ukraine. The Kingdom of Rus and Ukrainian Knights Cossacks were also known for their successful military campaigns conducted, by the way, in different corners of the world. We also had our own Ukrainian army during a short period of our renewed independence and Ukrainian People Republic in 1917-1922. So, starting from 1991, we have a new period of a long history of Ukrainian warriors. First decades of Ukrainian armed forces are pretty depressive, because Russian agents and economic troubles were doing their best to demilitarize Ukraine. And we were selling, stealing and destroying lots of our tanks, missiles and planes. And sometimes we feel really sorry about that, because some of the planes that were given to Russia, for example, for low gas prices, are now shelling Ukraine. And in general, that is the period when Ukraine was described as a neutral, demilitarized country. We signed Budapest Memorandum and we committed a brutal mistake when agreed to host Black Sea Navy, Russian Navy, in the Crimea. So, my advice, never agree on low gas prices when you negotiate with Russia. They will want more for that, for sure. And another reason that I have to mention, world was also afraid of the Soviet Union that collapsed and it was afraid of Ukraine with its nuclear potential and really big army. Somehow, in the 90s, Russia was seen as a strong country and as a guarantee for future peace. That's why world supported Ukraine's demilitarization and militarization of Russia with this help. Similar demilitarization took place in Belarus, now totally annexed by Russia and Kazakhstan. Now, as an honest Ukrainian, I must confess that before 2014, Ukrainian army almost did not exist. It counted approximately 40,000 people, it did not have normal weapons or armored vehicles. But Russian brutal invasion to Crimea, its annexation and invasion to Donbass and Luhansk regions led to huge reaction inside Ukrainian civil society. And hundreds of thousands of people volunteered to protect Ukraine on front lines, without equipment, without preparation, but protecting our native land. Honestly, I don't understand how seeing this emotional reaction and bravery of Ukrainian people back in 2014, Putin decided he will attack us again in 2022. Didn't he see we are strong and brave? Well, 
he didn't. And that's why his blitzkrieg failed and now Ukraine has a really strong army. Many of the volunteer battalions that appeared back in 2014 and 2015 now entered Ukrainian armed forces and serve officially. And lots of volunteering groups continue working for eight, nine years. And they have become super professional with a network of contacts all over the world. By the way, there are lots of jokes in Ukraine that even if you want a living dinosaur and you will ask Ukrainian volunteers, they will find you one. Starting 2014, Ukrainian armed forces are developing. Of course, there were and perhaps there are some people intoxicated by Soviet military tradition, but many new come. And the most important one of them is, of course, the commander of Ukrainian armed forces, the general of a new generation, Valery Zaluzhny. He is the person responsible for our defense and our success in this Russian war in Ukraine. The president of Ukraine, according to the constitution, is the supreme commander. Another person responsible for the defense is the minister of defense, Oleksiy Reznikov, and Serhii Shaptala, the head of the general staff. Since the start of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine in 2022, the number of people mobilized or serving by contract in Ukrainian armed forces is 700,000. I am honored to introduce you to three types of Ukrainian armed forces. Number one is ground forces. Number two is air forces. And number three, naval forces, because we are a sea country and I'm sure soon we will return more of our seashore. We all know that at the beginning of this special military operation, Putin wanted to demilitarize Ukraine. But he achieved just the country. He militarized us severely and he even militarized me personally. And now I, a girl very far away from a military, will introduce you to specific Ukrainian troops. First is uh, amphibious assault troops. Second is uh, special operation forces. And third is territorial defense forces. All of them together protect Ukraine from invaders. <laughs> Another important fact about Ukrainian armed forces and the fact that I am very proud of is that there are a lot of women in Ukrainian armed forces. At the beginning of this year, there were 42,000. Most importantly, 5,000 of them are on front lines performing various, very military tasks, like being a sniper or the head of the tank crew. We are very proud of these women and when we speak about defenders, we are very attentive to stress that these are not only men, but also women. And this is another sign that Ukraine is a democratic and civilized country because we have women in armies and women in armies typically make this armed forces more humane. In Russia, this is totally impossible and they still practice an awful and sometimes even deadly habit of Dedovshchina, where elder soldiers are bullying and beating uh, younger soldiers. It is uh, proved, according to their research, that those armies that introduce women to various positions are more kind and more normal. And we are proud of that. So in Ukraine, when we speak about defenders, we do not speak only about men. We speak about women and that is important. In 2008, Ukraine was ready to apply to become a NATO member. And this was the moment when Russia decided it must attack us, spread its Ruski Mir and revive the monster of Soviet Union. The problems for many countries like Georgia and Ukraine actually start in 2008. I often imagine how different our life would be and how many lives would have been saved if Ukraine was a member of NATO since 2008 or a member of the European Union since 2004 or 2014. But this is something we have to fight for and we are fighting successfully. 
Thank you for the support of your countries, because by the supplies of our allies, Ukrainians now have weapons and tanks built according to NATO standards. At the beginning of this war, we had only old Soviet equipment and a couple of Ukrainian uh, weapons developed on our factories. But this was definitely not enough. And today, Ukrainian soldiers are really strong and well-trained because they know how to use Soviet weapons, NATO weapons, and they are effective. Look how our patriots, I mean our, together, patriots are stopping Russian kinjals. And in future, when Ukraine finally joins NATO family and the family of the European Union, our armed forces will be able to share their experience. Because this war is actually the largest war in Europe since the end of the Second World War. On the 24th of February 2022, Russia brutally invaded Ukraine, hoping it will succeed in its plan of Blitzkrieg, taking Ukraine in three days. A year and more after this war, Ukraine is successful in the protection of its territory. We are not demilitarized, we are militarized. Russia was developing a myth that it is the second strongest army in the world. Now we see that it is the second strongest army in Ukraine after Ukrainian armed forces. And I'm really proud that my army, Ukrainian army, is known not only for its military success, but also for its kind and humane face. And come on, we are fighting and protecting our motherland, not invading other peoples. And I'm proud to be Ukrainian, and I'm proud to introduce you to my beautiful country. Please subscribe to our channel to learn more about Ukraine. Thank you for buying coffees and becoming my patrons. Slava Ukraini!